uh, as the front man of a band for the first time ever. Um, and I was back with my bro, Cy, uh, from Mindwire, and my two great friends as well, Pat and, and Lee, um, who were on the local scene with us and, and good friends too. And that was just beginning to, to, to pick up. We'd done uh, a couple of gigs and we'd written uh, a handful of songs and I really do think they were actually possibly the best songs that um, I personally had, had ever written and I was loving uh, being able to sing uh, the vocals um, and that was just on the way, it was all kind of uh, getting, picking up steam and that's when um, me and my bro decided it would be a really good idea to go on holiday to Alicante in Spain uh, you know, what could go wrong? Right, well, it was just, uh, it was supposed to be a little week away, staying at a fr uh, family friend's uh, villa in Torre Vieja. Uh, there was this, um, this busy highway that cut through um, the area, and um, we had to cross it to get to the other side. We were seeing this um, sort of car rental place. And um, it, it, there's no crossings at all down this road, and we were just waiting there you know, for trying to find a gap in the traffic and waiting for an opening to cross and, you know, it was bloody hot and, you know, um, and I think uh, we saw what looked like an opening in, in the traffic um, and it, it was going pretty fast so, you know, we had to be careful but um, we sort of saw this opening we sort of both tentatively moved forward and I checked the road again and I don't think um, Jim really responded in time, and when I looked back at the road, he was out in the middle, and that's when the car hit him. So that morning, we uh, we, we we left the pool. We just took a walk um, to to find this a uh, 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 the car company, and that's the last thing I remember. I woke. The next thing I remember, I'm in uh, the Royal Surrey in Guildford, and my mum's around me, and I didn't know what I was doing there, so I just sort of said. I actually remember this. I remember saying, "It's great that we're here. What, who are we seeing again? Who are we visiting?" Um, uh, and then that's kind of when slowly uh, my bro and my mum kind of told me what what had happened bit by bit. Uh, yeah, one minute is sort of cartwheeling through the air, and the next is sort of lying in the road about twenty feet away, and I sort of run over and just blind terror, you know. And there's just blood coming out of his eyes and his smashed skull and stuff. And people had stopped their cars and were sort of looking. And of course, you just think everyone's being a dumb onlooker, but you're screaming to someone, calling an ambulance and stuff. And and they had. Um, um, but it just seemed to take forever for them to turn up. And in, in, in the meantime, I had, um, you know, I was just uh, just insane. You know, it was just holding him, not knowing what to do, and I had this uh, kind sort of Irish family holiday maker sort of, sort of comforting me and telling me what to do, and then the ambulance got there and I wasn't allowed anywhere near, they sort of like cordoned off. And um, it was just what seemed like forever, I, I remember sort of running into this pub to wash all his blood off me in the sink, and uh, and uh, it was a German pub and the, and the landlord said, uh, yeah, dangerous road this. like you think it's like that that's all you can say you know I didn't know what was what to think um, and eventually they they airlifted him away and uh, yeah and I wasn't allowed in the helicopter I didn't know what state he was in none of them could speak English to tell me what was going on at all and uh, and yeah and that's when I, I felt about the most alone I'd ever felt really because I knew I had to get to him didn't know how <laughs> vaguely knew where Alicante, which is 45 miles away, and um, yeah, but I got there. <sighs> well, for the longest time, you know, two and a half weeks, there was just nothing. It was just absolutely comatose, and you know, you didn't dare to hope. But then, just vague, your little vague signs, just sort of like slowly drip fed. You know, um, from that first time you squeeze your hand back. Um, to the, especially the time when I put his headphones on and played him his own music from his iPod and uh, just to see him sort of slowly nodding his head and tapping the rhythm it's like 
yeah, yeah, he's, he's coming back. Yeah, we've got him. As I learned after a while, um, I, 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 I realised what he'd been through because obviously the accident happened to me, but I was out like a light when it happened. Um, but he experienced the whole thing. He saw it happen. He had to call the family um, and just try and cope with potentially having his twin brother uh, live as a vegetable for the rest of his life and how that would uh, impact on him and you know our, our family so that was one of the first things I noticed when I, I could I could just see in him like this, this strength um, that I hadn't seen before in him uh, um, and uh, yeah it still makes me emotional a bit but yeah um, I think that's the best thing that came out of it. I wouldn't change the accident for a second because I think that it brought everyone together and it made you know it just made us all have a slightly different perspective on priorities, you know. It certainly did for me. It made it change my life completely. Um I'm so proud of him. I, anyone that knows Jim is so proud of him because he's not only back to where he should have been all along, you know. He's but he's uh, he's on the verge of something fantastic again. He's, he's um, his singing and his playing is right back where he was, and you know, uh, he's shining brighter than ever. You know, and his new band Makobi, the sound just amazing, um, and uh, they've got a great future together. You know.